So DevEx's primary goal is to deliver a discovery for its shareholders in a number of uh, jurisdictions within Australia that are highly endowed. And today I'll talk you through why we believe DevEx is so uniquely placed to succeed in delivering this. We have multiple high quality projects uh, spread across several of Australia's most sought after exploration regions, each with their own prospective targets. Uh, also, likewise, in the West, we have the Sovereign Project where we're actively exploring at the moment. We have a drill rig on the, uh, we have a drill rig drilling away there at the moment. Uh, in New South Wales, we're also actively exploring in the Lock and Fold Belt, as Paul mentioned, looking for porphyry copper gold deposits. And, and likewise, we just recently announced some exciting results from the Juni project. And up in the Northern Territory, where uh, one of our traditional projects back when we were called Uranium Equities, we have a very large ground holding surrounding the historically famous Narblek Uranium Mine, where we have a granted mining lease and three exploration tenements, uh, where we're exploring for very high grade uranium. Well, Narblek itself is well known for its grade, having produced 24 million ounce, oh, sorry, uh, not gold, 24 million pounds of uranium at 1.84% uranium. So just remembering now in the modern uranium scene, when people talk about uranium in PPM, that's 18,000 PPM uranium that was produced from that project. So the Gorda stable, thanks Paul again. Um, most people know Tim Gorda, um, you know, f following the success of Chalice and, and also Liontown and also his involvement in Strike Energy. Uh, the real message for Tim that he always has pointed out even before the recent successes the last uh, 12, 24 months is that Tim really builds up a portfolio of uh, explorers that are capable of making discoveries, getting on the ground and doing the hard work and getting that momentum moving. That's what he's talked about before the success and that's what's delivered the success. You know, and Tim backs our companies fantastically. And, and um, you know, myself, I'm a geologist by trade. I've got 25 years experience involved in early stage exploration, generating targets, getting the ground pegged bringing those to resource development and eventually to underground mining, which is what I've been involved in in the past. Likewise, in the eastern states, Chris Torrey, 35 years experience exploring for porphyry copper gold deposits uh, in that area and, and beyond. And within the whole team at the moment, right now, we've got seven exploration geologists working in, on the various projects. So we do have a big team. We've got a team of people who are focused on the ground. You can go into our office today and you won't see any of them in the office at the moment. We're all going out in the bush at the moment. So current structure very quickly is we, we just did a recent placement. Uh, we currently have 308 million shares on issue with uh, approximately $17 million cash in the bank. That, that cash really is driving our momentum forward now. We've got these projects, we love the projects. Hopefully you're getting some sweets now and by the time your sugar rush kicks in, you'll know these projects well and be excited by them like I am. That $18 million will sell, that 17 will see our exploration go forward over the next 12, 24 months on all projects and we love them all. All right, so just drilling down into the exact projects, those that are not familiar with them, just starting in Western Australia, moving across to New South Wales and then winding up in the Territory. Uh, we're exploring in the Julemark complex. Uh, we're exploring for high-grade nickel-copper PG mineralisation. So the map you're seeing there is a magnetic image of the region. To the south on the bottom of the map, you'll see Chalice's recent discovery from last year at Gonneville. And then their recent announcements on exploration as they progress on along to the north along that magnetic trend. We're located both north of Chalice and also between and south of the recent uh, results that Caspian Resources announced to the market from the Yarrowinda Brook project. You know, recently they show some really sexy looking core uh, waiting for results naturally. But it's what it's telling us is that we're in a great location. And the reason for the location is that everyone's exploring for these what's called mafic, ultramafic intrusions. To the north of Caspian, it's a mafic, ultramafic intrusion. Chalice, it's a mafic, ultramafic intrusion. And we've finally been able to get on the ground here this year with air core drilling. And likewise with the air core drilling we did earlier this year, we're now seeing quite an extensive mafic, ultramafic intrusion. So. On the, on the western side of our project, we're exploring under an earn-in agreement with our joint venture partner, Australian Silica Quartz Groups. That's, that earn-in agreement there has given us the ability to get on the ground straight away and do this drilling. We now have on the eastern side of that magnetic anomaly, we now have a granted tenement 100% to us, 
And we've also got the Air Corps rig out there at the moment drilling in that area as well. So we're defining this extensive mafic ultra mafic intrusion. We're seeing elevated platinum and palladium for the spacing that we're drilling at. And with the new drilling that we're doing with the Air Corps drilling, once we get the results, what we're hoping to do is define hotspots, hit the ground running with ground EM, looking for conductors to then lead into diamond and RC drilling. Quick photo of the rig, I get excited, I've jumped ahead of myself a little bit, but uh, approximately 200, meter, 200 holes for 5,000 metres are currently taking place. Okay, so just moving across to New South Wales into the Lachlan Fold Belt, it's a big area. We're exploring in two exciting jurisdictions, naturally the Cobar region, which is really in the news at the moment following a lot of discovery success from pump companies like Aurelia. We like the targets at, at, at in the Cobar region. And likewise, we're exploring for porphyry copper gold deposits in the Macquarie Arc at our Juni project. So just starting at Wilgar Downs, where we've got a diamond rig expecting to arrive this weekend to drill our target at Wilgar Downs. We have an earning agreement, which we've just met. Uh, we're earning, uh, we've earned 80% into the project. Uh, and we've got a great Cobar type target there. And likewise, we have our own 100% ground along that rookery, what we call the rookery fault, uh, where most of the Northern Cobar deposits are located, like the CSA mine that Glencore are operating. Likewise, Aurelia's Peak and, and uh, great Cobar deposits. Uh, and we've got the, we just were recently granted that license up along that Northern trend. And we look forward to getting on the ground there as well. Um, you know, other activities in the area joining us, Sandfire are earning in on the Endeavour region and they've done a really great earn-in deal with CBH Resources there. So there's a lot of news happening up there, a lot of exploration, there's a lot of rigs moving around Cobar right now. So just taking you into our Wilgar Downs project where we have a drill rig turning up this weekend. Uh, we like this because cobalt type deposits really quickly geology is you get these magnetic aureoles associated with copper and gold mineralisation. And when we looked at Wilgar, we saw that these, this image here shows you these two nice circular magnetic aureoles around the rocks. We drilled a hole late last year, early this year, into the main magnetic target on the, on the western side. Uh, we drilled through, we encountered a very small one metre zone of magnetic sulphides together with uh, copper sulphides and gold mineralisation. What, what was interesting was, yeah, we targeted that, that magnetic anomaly, we modelled it, we drilled it, but the drill hole that we drilled there wasn't, it didn't encounter any real significant magnetism in the hole to actually explain that magnetic anomaly. So we felt it was a near miss. The only thing magnetic in that hole really was that zone we had. And we did downhole EM just recently, which we announced. And what we're seeing now is 40 metres away from this hole on the western side, we're seeing a, a nice strong conductor. And that conductor uh, is what we're planning to drill test oaks so commencing this weekend. And um, just to sort of emphasise that point, there's a quick cross section of that target. You know, the reds, the magnetics, the blues, the gravity feature that is there. Conductor A, which is 40 metres off that drip, drip diamond hole you see there. Uh, that's what we're going to go back and drill test. And on the left-hand side, just a bit of a stick of that core that we got out of that drill hole, just showing you where the, the magnetic sulphides are. You can see the yellow where there's chocolate pirate, which is copper sulphide. So it's a great target. There's nothing else in the hole that explains the EM target. We see an immediate EM target around that zone, but then we see that conductor A nearby. So we're really excited to see what happens there. Okay, so just in the other part of Lock and Fold Belt in the central area, in the, in the Gundagai region where we're exploring a Juni. Uh, this area generally doesn't need much introduction, so it's porphyry, copper, gold, heartland. Naturally, Katie Ridgeway and North Parks are two of Australia's biggest copper gold deposits out there. Uh, New Crest of Mining at Katie Ridgeway, and, and they're all associated with these monzonite porphyries that come through and they just dump out a lot of copper, a lot of gold. What's unique about them is the age of those two porphyries at, at North Parks and Katy are the same age and same chemistry. And recently, uh, what's excited and created a bit of a pegging rush where we are at Juni is that they've been age dating monzonite stand there to be the same age as Katy and Parks, uh, same chemistry, and that's really kicked off a, a spur of exploration in the area. To the north of us, Newmont are exploring with Gilmore, uh, they're exploring that Kubar monzonite in this image that I was showing you here. That, that Kubar monzonite is the one they age dated to be the same as Cadia. You can drive that road right now and you can see two drill rigs up there drilling away there and they've been there for a while. We'd like to know what's going on. 
But meanwhile, we're focused on our own project at Nangus Road where this image is showing you magnetics, okay, it's geology and it's geophysics, but we drilled a diamond hole with co-funding from New South Wales government late last year. We drilled into that magnetic target, which looks similar to the Kubar Monzonite. We drilled Monzonite. We didn't get a lot of copper in it. We see trace copper through that hole with the alteration. But what we were excited about was it's a big area to go and explore. And so following that, we've started air core drilling, uh, which we just recently announced some results on the northern margin of that of that monzonite. And we've got and we've had an RC rig down there drilling the main monzonite area and we're waiting on results from there. The air core results are really showing some exciting and noisy copper and gold mineralization. Um, this air core drilling is really broad space. So just give you the context when we talk about grey, we're drilling this air core on 400 metre north-south traverses, 200 metre spacing between the holes. So, you know, d don't be discouraged by seeing lots of 100 PBV gold in this sort of spacing, in this sort of environment. This is reconnaissance exploration. And what we can see on this section, I'm just showing you from one of the traverses, is, you know, these holes are 200 metres apart. Um, we're seeing noisy gold all the way down the hole up to, from four metre composite sampling, up to half a gram to that. It's noisy all the way down a hole and it's associated with copper mineralisation. So what we've got to do is bring that RC rig back in later in July and start infilling this area. And again, just emphasising spacing here. So these drill holes are 400 metres apart. So you can imagine what a, a hole here and 400 metres apart looks like. And it's not like we've got a one hole wonder and one hole noise here. There's, there's a cluster of anomalous gold and copper here and I'm really looking forward to coming back, following up on this and hopefully better, more results from the RC drilling over the main monzonite target here. Okay, so really two of the force here. We're going anti-clockwise now, moving up to the Nardlec project in the Territory. Thanks, Duncan, for the real good comments on uranium. I don't have to do that. I don't have to convince people. I think I'm convinced. Um, uranium is really exciting. It's been in the doldrums, as Duncan said, for quite a long time. We hope it will come out of the doldrums pretty soon. There's certainly a lot of market sentiment out there. There's a lot of enthusiasm into uranium. Where we're exploring is where we've been involved for a very long time. Uh, we traditionally were called uranium equities. This project up here is surrounding the historical Narvalek uranium mine. Back in the 80s, during the three mine policy, Narvalek was one of those mines. It's very high grade. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, 18,000 ppm uranium for those modern day uranium thinkers or 1.84% uranium was mined from Narvalek. Uh, and we think there's a lot of opportunity here. We're located outside the National Park. We're in an area where it's not traditional owners, they are the owners. We have agreements with the traditional owners or owners up there. Those agreements allow exploration to take place and through into mining with commercial terms in those agreements. What we like about it is they supporting us quite quite, um, quite well. All of those traditional owners were involved in the Narblek mine back in the 80s when it was when it was going on and they really liked the area and, and supporting us quite well. You know, this is a, a field which has produced a lot of uranium. Everyone knows you, the range of uranium mine. Over 500 million pounds has either been defined in resource at the moment or through production from this field. So it's a, it is a well endowed, if you want to use the word tier one, tier one uranium mining district in this area. So what we're looking for naturally is traditionally, we've got 50 years of exploration data we're currently trolling through. This is a real treasure trove of data and we're looking through all of that over our own project and we're seeing some gems popping out. And we're putting this together at the moment. This is a review that's been going on for the last six months with dedicated geologists. We like the targets that we're getting and we're just finalising that review at the moment. And that's not to discount the potential for gold mineralisation and also copper mineralisation in this region. Those that remember the 80s should remember the old or the famous Coronation Hill deposit. You know, Coronation Hill located down the south, same as Narblack, same age, same system. Coronation Hill started its life out as a copper prospect. They found copper, they found uranium, they mined the uranium and then BHP Gold went off and drilled a fantastic intercept for gold underneath that Coronation Hill deposit. And they were well on the way to defining some pretty spectacular gold before it became part of the National Park. Um, as I mentioned, we're well outside of the National Park. Just to emphasise grade, just for, for those that are familiar with uranium and Narblek, this is just the pit, what was mined from Narblek on the northern part. And, and if you can see it, hopefully on the side, the high grade nature of these deposits at Narblek is just so much uranium is contained in such little space. 
you know, drill hole intercepts like 19 metres of 13% uranium is not uncommon from Narblik pit. The, the ore body that was mined there at Narblik is very sharply controlled by a northern fault. It's faulted off and what we're doing is looking for both the controls that the northern fault reflects and also for the offset high grade nature of Narblik. And we think that there's no better place to explore for high grade uranium than in the shadow of this pit or the shadow of the head frame as some people like to talk about. So there's a lot of opportunity there. We've been going slow for the last few years, but with the enthusiasm out there, we're really pushing through the data at the moment, coming up with some attractive targets. We're well, just sort of summing it up um, from a time schedule and what we're up to. You know, we've taken you around Australia really quickly. Um, we've got an air core rig out drilling at Sovereign in Western Australia, north of Chalice's recent discovery. We're drilling a mafic ultra mafic intrusion, so we've got the right rocks. That drilling should take place and we hope to sort of see it finishing up um, late June, early July. Uh, and then with the results from that and what we plan to do, we'll hit the ground with more ground EM over, the, over this project, both on our own tenement and our urn in tenement there. And we look forward to seeing those results. Meanwhile, the diamond rig is turning up north of Cobar to drill that Wilgar Downs target. We expect that to start this weekend. And likewise at Juni, we're waiting on RC results from the final part of that program. And then we circle back in late July with another RC rig to drill that noisy gold and copper mineralization. So there's a lot going on. And, and finally, uh, Narvalek, who's, we've got a team now dedicated to that and they'll be working there over the next six months, uh, working up a number of targets in the field there. So uh, I guess I'm just gonna underline this one word and that's momentum. You know, we're, we are about momentum. Tim is our, our major shelter, he's our chairman and he carries a big whip and he doesn't like seeing us sitting around in the office. We're very active in the field. The cash that we've raised, the $17 million, ensures momentum across these projects, ensures us to take it not just to the next step, but the next step beyond that and beyond that. And that's what we're about with the momentum. We've got the geologists, we've got the team and we can do this. And we're really about delivering that discovery hole. Thanks for your time. Thank you.